Good afternoon. Turn up way. All of those. Thanks for chatting with me today. Um, can you introduce yourself briefly? What organisation you're with and who you are? Yeah, of course, thanks. Um, rejoining and part of 350 Artillery, the Wellington outfit, and um, embracing being back in climate activism after Masters. So we did some research on some various climate corporate activities. So yeah, it's good to be back. Great. What uh, Do you want to Tell us what groups you're involved with these days then, or getting back involved with? Yeah, of course. So um, I'd probably say the main ones are Extinction Rebellion um, and 350, but there's other ones on, I'm on the peripheral of. It's a, it's a organic community. Right, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. And today we went to Radio New Zealand House, a couple of buildings up the road here. What was that about? Yeah, sure. Thanks for asking. Um, so Graham Townsend, who's very busy and very well researched on the uh, climate change scene, um, had a petition that he'd put together through Action Station, um, which basically outlined um, Radio New Zealand, which is obviously government owned and but independent, and their coverage of climate change issues. So there are other. Uh, news organisations like Stuff for instance, they have dedicated slots and channels for climate change news to go down so that you've got a place you can go to on their website and look at the articles for it. Um, Radio New Zealand do some really good climate coverage, however there are places where it feel it, it, the, the absence is obvious. So Graham Townsend's uh, petition, which a group of us from various um, four different organisations were presenting, was about getting that uh, in a more structured way and, and um, a dedicated channel and, make, and ensuring that those key climate change issues and messages are throughout the uh, conversation that's in the media narrative. Okay, let's come back to the messages and, and in a second. What, what are the four organisations you're talking about? Now? Yeah, sure. So, uh, in, in I'll, I'll say 350 first, just because I happen to be affiliated with them, but no, through no ranking. Okay. Um, and um, Extinction Rebellion, and Restore Passenger Rail, and um, Climate um, Fridays, or, or they're actually called um, Fridays for Future. Fridays for Future, right, right. A group, yeah. Okay. Um, and so there's a, a consortium of people re representing those various that um, went up to level two and um, handed over the Graham Townsend's petition. Great, okay. And so what are the main messages in the petition? What does the petition say? Yeah, sure. No, really good question. So the petition um, identifies the fact that the climate coverage isn't always there um, and that it needs um, to be more consistently present. So the, the, co the call is to make sure that the responsibility as a government provider of media is upheld because there was a survey in 2022, Ipsos survey, which showed that over 80% of New Zealanders think climate change issues are very important and the amount of coverage and the, the um, availability in, in every article needs to be there if you're going to cater to that as part of the New Zealand social interest. Good, good. Okay, um, who is Graham Townsend? Yeah, sure. So Graham Townsend, um, he's been involved in 350 Christchurch um, and also in um, Fossil Free Group down there, So, is it, which was um, so some of the same members and so forth. Um, I, I believe he's also been in contact with Coal Action Network, Katsaloa and so on. So he's very active, very well researched. So what he did do as part of the petition, which I respect, is everything he had there, he had points for. So he had the, the URLs, the references, so he substantiated his claims, rather than it wasn't a, you know, a knee-jerk petition, it was well researched and thought. Oh, right, okay. That's interesting. How long did it take to collect the signatures for the petition and how many people signed up to the petition? Yeah, sure. So it was bubbling away for a few months. Um, so four I believe, but I'd, I'd have to chat to Graham about that. And we got over 600 um, signatures, which was really good considering that actually with all the COVID things going on and people get back to work, etc., it's it is getting harder to get people's attention. Mm. Um, so 
we know that um, anything signed now people feel strongly about because there is so much going on and so much pressure on people's lives from different directions including climate change related because obviously that then creates economic pressures and so forth and makes time more limited. Yep. And so the petition is a criticism or a lot of criticism of RNZ? How would you describe it? Sure, it's an awareness raising exercise. So we appreciate their impartiality, but we also know in their charter that the, one of the um, their operational um, policies in their charter, they need to ensure that um, they're representing the social interests of New Zealand. So um, whilst that we went and met with them and they emphasised their impartiality, we also emphasised their responsibility to represent New Zealand's social interests. Well, but is the implication that they're not doing that enough already? I think it's fair to say they could be doing more coverage and okay. more integrated coverage and also more dedicated coverage of climate change issues. So they don't have, for instance, a place where you can go and you go, right, this is all the climate change related material. They've got some very good climate change reporters and the quality of their, their um, articles on that topic are very high, right. but it's, it's about the coverage breadth and dedication mm. of that particular um, type of material. So you'd like to see, in particular, one example of what you'd like to see is a dedicated page for the climate crisis? Yes, definitely. Right. And you get certain, I'll call for want of a better word, feel-good stories where they talk about some sort of economic advancement, but they don't always bring in the issue of the um, the emission impacts and so forth. Like what, what can you use an example of what that? Yeah, sure. So um, one they've addressed recently, but in past um, articles that have been as consistent is when they're talking about transport issues, it's not always talking about the emission impact. Now, to be fair, when we met with them today, they did highlight the fact they'd done a recent article on bus transport in Auckland, which did raise that very aspect. Right. But I wouldn't say if you look back through all their articles, it's always present. So you're looking for more consistency in connecting issues and weather events with the climate crisis? Yes, and um, getting rid of some of the old narratives where the ec economy is more important than climate change, because climate oh. change underpins everything right. so that the basis for reporting needs to the media narrative needs to shift and that shift is happening but not quick enough that's awesome that's on stand <laughs> great thank you for your time Adam no thank you